Our last speaker today, um, I was going to say doctor, but now she's, for the past week, she's Professor Kalmit Devi. Let's move out of the way. Um, Professor Kalmit Levi is a senior lecturer at the Department of Human, Mole and Human Molecular Genetics and Biochemistry here at the Tel Aviv University. She um, was appointed here in 2011, but has worked for over 15 years before that in many institutes, including in Adassa, where we did our PhD together. Um, her lab currently uncovers basic molecular mechanisms underlying melanoma initiation, and uh, she serves on a number of uh, leading editors. She's a uh, leading editor boards, such as the Journal of Melanoma Research, Pigment Cell and, Mel and Melanoma Research. Her talk today will be about the bidirectional communication of melanoma with the microenvironment. Come with, please. Hi, so I want to thank the organizer for inviting me. I'm going to tell you today two stories about how melanoma, and I'm going to focus on one, cancer. Uh, melanoma, this is what we are studying in the lab, and this is the skin of our skin, okay? This is the top layer, which is the epidermis. This is the external part, which is exposed to the sun and to the air, okay? We have here layer of dead cells, which are easy to peel. We all have experience with it. So this is the epidermis. It's uh, characterized with layers and layers and layers of cells that are attached together, building a shape like an ligo. And at the basal layer of the epidermis, there is a cell called melanocytes. And this cell, when it's in a single or a bunch of cells, so this is nevi in our skin, normal nevi. And this cell is basically responsible for the induction of pigment and the generation of tanning as response to UV exposure in our skin. So this, these are, and just below that, it's the dermis of our skin. So these are normal feature of our skin and half of my lab is studying normal function of the skin but once there is a malignant transformation and skin cancer appear there can be three types of skin cancer basically so if this cell goes wrong it's called basal cell carcinoma if this one goes wrong it's squamous cell carcinoma but when this cell go wrong one would get melanoma and melanoma is the most lethal type of skin cancer. And why is it so lethal? Why is it so dangerous? Because, and you can see here the stages of the disease, because this disease, the cells have the ability to penetrate down to the dermis. In the dermis, they have blood veins. You know, when you peel off your epidermis, you're not bleeding, right? So there are no blood veins in our epidermis, only exist in the dermis. So if cancer cells, can penetrate down to the dermis and reach the blood veins, this is the, the potential of generating metastases, and metastases was basically killing the patient. So this is a very deadly disease because it has a very strong ability to invade down to the dermis here from the epidermis. But if you look carefully on the stages of the disease, you see that there are very distinct stages that pathologists are being reported for years. Okay, so is there radial growth phase or in situ melanoma where cells are expanding? You see the cell lives here and once there is malignant transformation, cells are start expanding within the epidermis. And then there is a switch from unknown reason, cells are start penetrating down to the dermis into the basically lethal stage of the disease. So this switch between these two stages is very, very critical to diagnose, to block, to understand what's going on there. And there was, it, it was a big question mark when we started the, the, the research. So when you Google melanoma, you see that over the years, pathologists were reported again and again and again on the same model that I just showed you. The cells starting here at the basal, yeah, melanocytes, the normal cell, then the cells are expanding upwards towards the upper layer of the epidermis, and only then there is invasion down into the a, a dermis. So when I looked at it for the thousandth time, I asked a question, I said, just a second, maybe it's a stupid question, but I, I asked a question from a different angle. I said, the cells here in the normal skins are growing their lifetime in the basal layer. They are not moving, you know, our nevi 
are not moving through our lifetime, right? It's very stable cell. It's very solidly located in our skin. So the cells are located here in the basal layer, and just before they are going down and invading to the dermis, they are basically growing upwards to the wrong direction, right? So if this, the cancer has any logic, evolutionary logic, cells will immediately penetrate down and not spending time expanding in the epidermis. So that was the beginning of our research. And we said maybe changing position here from the basal layer up to the top layer of the epidermis has any meaning. So we took skin, we broke it down to the different type of cells and we mix it with melanoma cells that do not have the ability to invade. And we were very surprised to see that when melanoma cells were mixed with the top, top layers of cells in the epidermis, suddenly these cells gain ability to invade. They lost their pigment, which indicate aggressiveness. And when you co-graft, you inject melanoma cells with the cells of the microenvironment, the different cells of the skin, you get lung metastases. So that was very surprising to learn that melanoma cells, when they are growing upwards, basically to the top layer of the epidermis, just meeting new type of cells, just changing address or changing the neighbors, give them, provides them these changes in morphology and makes these cells very aggressive, making melanoma to be transformed. Then we break our head to try to understand what's going on, what's in the top layer of the skin that provides melanoma with this addition aggressive characterization and we were decided to focus after a lot of controls on the notch signaling notch signaling is a known signaling which involved cell cell contact so you need to have one cell expressing the ligand and you need to have another cell expressing the receptor and only when there is a click there is a physical interaction between the two type of cells the two type of receptor and ligand this is where the signaling is going to be light on and this is what we did here. So we checked first whether melanoma cells actually expressing, human melanoma cells actually expressing the receptor. Yes, they do. And when you look at the microenvironment, you look at our skin to see whether our skin is actually expressing the ligand, we saw something striking. We saw that there are different layers of the skin which are characterized differently with the notch ligand. So you can see here that the basal, I hope you can see it. So the basal layer is clean no notch ligand, which means while cells are sitting here at the basal layer, they will not be activated by notch signaling, but only when cells will start growing upwards towards the upper layer, they will start receiving the ligand and, and then, then they will be expressing the notch signaling, as you can see here, again by co-culturing. Then we move on to check all of our uh, nice experiments in the lab to see whether it's actually happening in patients. So you can see here, can you turn the light off somehow? Just a little bit. Yeah? Okay. So we took here, this is a sample of a, a one patient. We, we examine many patients. So this is one patient with a very aggressive disease. You can follow here after the stages that I, that I showed you before in the cartoon. So you can see here, these are normal melanocytes. This is melanoma, all the red that are expanding and growing within the epidermis. And then all the dermis is covered with melanoma cells, very aggressive disease. But we also stained for this notch ligand that I told you is only expressed at the top layer. You can see it here in green. And what was striking to see was that in human melanoma, patient after patient, this is what we saw. As long as there is physical distance between melanoma cells and the top layer of the epidermis that express the ligand, the cells are kept at the radial growth phase. And if a pathologist is catching the disease here, this is good news because the cells haven't penetrated yet to the dermis and this is a stage of a disease that, that one can be uh, free of, cured of. So this is what basically I showed you here and I will, I will skip the molecular, go straight to the, to the overall model. So this is what I showed you so far. So this is melanocytes, normal skin, and when there is malignant transformation, cells are expanding within the epidermis. This is the in situ stage of the disease. 
If the disease is being catched here, these are good news. And then cells are going through this transition switch and start growing down to the dermis. And this switch is basically due to the fact that the cells were growing upwards and upwards until they reached a, a layer of cells that is actually expressing the ligand. We were also using a drug in the paper to block this interaction. And we had some success in blocking this transition of melanoma cells into the aggressive stage. We also have a nice knowledge about the molecular mechanism in which genes are being up or down regulated, including MIR222221. And this paper was published. And then while working on this paper, we came across many, many melanoma samples. We were just scanning many pathology reports and many pathology examination of, of patients. And this is what we saw, something that was never reported before. Okay, so we were examining melanoma patients. And, and look, look with me, you, you will see exactly the same thing, I believe. So this is normal skin. This time we zoom out even more in, deep into our dermis. You can see it here, okay? And this is melanoma, and I'm telling you that the melanoma, you see here the epidermis nicely, and here is the epidermis. So this is melanoma that is radial growth phase, so the inside to melanoma, only in the epidermis. This is melanoma that is already, you see many, many purple dots, which are cells covered and fill the dermis. So this is a very aggressive stage of the disease. But when you focus here, we saw something very, very weird. So look, when we, when, when we stain it, it's even more clear. So these are the normal melanocytes in the epidermis. Okay, this is the dermis. You see some cells here and there, some cells we stain for, for fibroblasts, which are in the dermis. But look here, melanoma is stuck here at the epidermis, but you can already see changes down there, straight down from where the location of melanoma, you can see changes in the dermis. You can see some kind of proliferation, aggregation, movement, something going on down in the dermis right below where melanoma located. And that was striking. How the dermis knows that up there, there is tumor going on. And is there any meaning to this? We saw it in a patient after a patient, and it was never reported before that the dermis has any changes period to melanoma invasion. So cells haven't invaded yet. When we zoom in into these regions, what we saw, we saw small particles of melanoma. And we said, what? Does melanoma send small particles down to the dermis period to uh, invasion to the dermis? But that was the beginning of our research. And, and this figure was chosen to be on the cover of Nature Cell Biology, and we were very happy. And this is exactly showing that particles of melanoma exist in the dermis period to melanoma cells invading. And this is what we found. So we have isolated melanoma vesicles, small vesicles from melanoma cells. We treated a fibroblast, okay, the, the cells of the dermis with these vesicles. And we saw these dramatic changes that cells change their gene expression, cells start growing faster, and you can see it here also in the movie. So when the dermis was treated with melanoma vesicles, okay, you can see how cells are growing faster and moving towards the location where melanoma exists and where there is down there, there are the secretion of the vesicles of melanoma. And when we were treating melanoma with a drug to block the secretion of these vesicles, we basically block the effect over the epidermis. And what are these changes in the epidermis? Is there any meaning to these changes? Okay, so we saw changes in the dermis. The dermis is, the cells in the dermis are growing faster. They are migrating. Is there any meaning to it? So we took these cells that were treated with melanoma vesicles, and then we took them and mix them again with melanoma cells. And we, we saw that when you mix melanoma cells with the dermal cells, with fibroblasts that were pre-treated with melanoma vesicles, the tumor grow much faster. So these changes in the dermis are enhancing melanoma growth. Now we wanted to go deeper 
and understand what's inside these vesicles that is actually promoting these changes in behavior of the dermis. And we found that these vesicles are including small RNA that Noam Shomon was talking with you about. So these vesicles were contain small RNA and these small RNA were basically, you can see here, human melanoma. This is human melanoma and how the small RNA is being spread out of the center of melanoma, spread out, okay, to the areas, to the, to the uh, nesting area of the melanoma via these vesicles. So these vesicles contain small RNA and are being releasing them around the melanoma and why Okay, you can also see it here in the mouse model. So this is the tumor and this is the stroma cells around it. And the stroma cells is filled with these microRNAs and with these vesicles that were spread from the melanoma. And you can see how these vesicles containing small RNA that is actually targeting IGF-2R, for example, in the stroma, which basically enhancing back the tumor growth. So there is a, a cross communication of melanoma with its microenvironment to enhance its growth. What I showed you so far is that. So we have here the normal melanocyte and when there is a malignant transformation, cells are growing within the epidermis, the inside to melanoma or radial melanoma. In this stage, melanoma cells are busy in sending vesicles down to the dermis. There are dermal changes, dramatic changes. Cells are being here in the dermis, the fibroblasts, are being transformed into cancer associated fibroblasts. They are enhancing growth, they are migrating more. And when melanoma cells will penetrate, these cells is a great, fruitful uh, uh, area for melanoma to enhance back the growth of melanoma. So melanoma is basically taking care of its next stage of the, the, the generation of the premetastatic niche. And this is what we found, and this is the molecular behind it. And that was published a few uh, months ago. So I, I want to summarize the two stories that I just told you. Uh, the first story led by very talented research assistant, Tami Golan, Dr. Tami Golan, and she was doing the, the study where cells are growing upwards towards a notch notch ligand expressing microenvironment and the trigger for melanoma cells to go down to the dermis and Shani Dror, Dr. Shani Dror and Lorraine Sander were performing the experiments and they're leading the research that I told you about melanoma cells spreading the vesicles down to the dermis. This, she, um, uh, Lorraine, she is a PhD student at the KFC in Heidelberg, and this project was a very nice collaboration with the DKFC in, in Germany. We had a joint uh, a grant with the uh, Ministry of Science in Israel and the DKFC, so we had a joint grant, and that was a very nice collaboration. Lorraine visited our lab several times to learn all the systems and bring it back to Germany. And that's it. I want to thank my group, collaborations, and funding, and I want to thank you. I'll take questions. Any questions? Yeah. Where comes the nanotechnology in it? We haven't done anything with nanotechnology. We have identified, I, I don't remember who asked the questions about the um, amount of nanoparticles in the cell. Okay, so what we were doing, because we were dealing with, we started our experiment from human samples, so we know what is the real nano in life. So we actually measured how many particles melanoma cells is sending down to the fibroblast, and we know that there are 500 particles per cell within the dermis. Okay, and once we learn from the patient how many particles, we develop some, some system in, in a microscopy to, to uh, count these vesicles. And so now we know the amount, and then we went back to culture and we know how many nanoparticles, how many basically vesicles we should treat fibroblasts in order to receive the same uh, phenotype. So I am not a lab who is doing nanotechnology per se, but we are, from learning from the um, patients, we know about exosome and we know about melanosomes within patients and how to appeal it out when you are designing a drug. So this is the crosstalk between the two fields. 
there a way to translate this to a screening uh, patient when it's going through the phase, the, the triggering phase? So we are working now. Is there um, a diagnosis tool? That's what you were asking. To take the knowledge that we have here. So we are uh, doing now two things. In the diagnostic part, we are trying to see whether when a, a biopsy is being taken, whether you can already diagnose the changes in the dermis. So we are working on it because, yes, you can see these changes and it's very important for the, you know, how the treatment is going to be dictated. The second thing that we are doing, not related to diagnosis, but related to, to treatment, we are now collaborating with a cosmetic company to treat the to treat nevi or suspicious nevi or suspicious um, yeah in the skin to treat them with a drug that will a block the release of the vesicles a drug that will block the changes in the fibroblast and a drug that will block the notch signaling that i showed you before so three three, three drugs based on our uh, system and maybe here the nanotechnology will go in because we would need a way to deliver the drugs down. So these are the things that we are doing now. So I was I, I've been asked whether the vesicles are be, being penetrated down to the blood. So there are no evidences so far for vesicles going to the blood. The cells are going into the blood. Um, not sure if they are still containing vesicles. The vesicles are basically being observed by the fibroblasts, which are the dermal part. And the fibroblasts are not being uh, penetrating, as far as I know, are not being penetrated down to the, and, and being invaded and metastasized. It's the melanoma cells. But that's, a good, that, that's also a good question, like the rest of the question, whether if we will find evidences of these vesicles in the blood, maybe we will know that somewhere there is a misfunction of some nevi in the skin and maybe we can screen it better. So it will be uh, uh, also going to the same question of, of diagnosis. It's just to, to add on to your question, this is a melanoma. Other cancers, they do push, pull vesicles, but not melanoma. Okay. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for those watching us at home or at work or wherever you are. Um, I'd like to thank our speakers, Dani, Kalmit, Noam, who gave us a nice overview of different types of cancer, if it was melanoma or breast or blood cancers, um, different ways that we could treat them or diagnose them or utilize nanotechnology. I hope that you all uh, learned things today. I hope you have many questions that you could go back and ask our speakers. And um, hope to see you all next year. Thank you. <laughs>